All right, YouTube, today we're going to play some Death Shadow. Just kind of threw this list together. There's not a whole lot of rhyme or reasoning behind it. Um, I've just, I've liked the Jays recently, so played those. There's been a little tick up in burn decks on Moto, so added a couple brutalities, but and added some angers just because there's a little bit more dredge hate going around, but I might move those to ley lines if they, the little Steamkin Bedlam Riddler deck keeps being popular. But besides that, I'm already in a league. We're going to finish this one and play another one tonight, get seven or eight matches in. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, let me get this up here. All right. This over here, just get everything set up. It's my opponent. Okay. Burn a story. I don't recognize the name, but. Oh, yeah, that seems alright. We're definitely going to be serum visioning for some lands, but if we hit a land, we should be able to angler next turn, as long as our land's a fetch land. Yeah, what's up? Where am I putting them? I don't know. Hang on one second. What's up? Uh, yeah, I didn't have ley lines this time, but like it's it's certainly an a fine card if you want to play them. I don't think there's any reason. Like if if somebody told me, um, we're gonna put this in the bottom, but we're going to put this on top because it's just a card that enables delve, and it's the same thing as uh, as I effectively same thing as a land drop. Well, I wish I would didn't have that on there now. Let's do this first in case we hit. If we don't have to cycle this. One, two, three, four, five. So we actually do have to cycle this, unfortunately. But turn two angler against burn is the way to do it. I don't have another threat, so I'm not gonna block. Like I need I need uh, this Gromag Angler to survive to win. All right. First bolt suspended. Okay. So we got a couple different things we can do here. We can attack and battle rage, which puts me to seven. This comes off puts me to three, and then we're likely dead to pretty much anything. Um, I can just attack, or we can play a slower game. And I think with having a stub and snapcaster mage, I would like to play a little bit of a slower game. So I think we're just going to hold off. Get this into play tapped. 
But I don't think going Fetch Shock is going to do anything for me. We're just going to fire this stub off. Because we or fire this off because we're going to use it. What's going on here? Because we, we've got to start trading. Land drop's not bad for the home team. We've unfortunately got a block here, which means we're, we're going to trade this with a burn spell and just really hope that it's not a searing blaze. Right? Let's hope it's not a searing blaze. Yeah, that's gross. That's just like the worst possible. Okay. We're gonna fetch. We need we're gonna need red mana to win this game. It doesn't look overly likely, but we're gonna need it. Alright, well. Maybe they've got just creatures. Alright, well we've got some cards to bring in. Nice, we got two brutalities in our sideboard now. So we're playing, we got all this burn going around. So we're gonna bring in the push, the brutality, command, and the battle rage. Cut the street race and cut this. Leave one dismember in there. Oh no, we're gonna cut the dismember for the stub. Again, I'm not super familiar with this. I kind of just threw this list together. Haven't really thought about Death Shadow in a little while. Just been playing other stuff. Sorry, what was the reason for no lands again? Um I just the last, the last list I played had angers in it, and that's just what I went with. Uh, we're going to keep this. This hand it could be kind of slow, but we have a counter spell, two discard spells, and a death shadow, and the, the games tend to slow down after sideboard, and we got a cantrip. Yeah, like the ley lines might be right to do, but I just haven't, I haven't really thought about it. I more or less just wanted to play some shatter tonight to kind of hop back on the hop back on the horse. We're going to get a watery grave here. So they're drawing a land. Hopefully they've got like three in their hand. Okay. So we don't have an answer to this Eidolon. So we're going to take this path, probably take this Eidolon next turn. And then hopefully be able to stub something, which is likely we're going to be able to do. So if they play the Rift Bolt, we can't play Shadow. Yeah, so maybe it was right to do that. Hopefully we can tag one of these uh, Lava Spikes this turn. They might not go for that, but it would be nice. So we'd like to just be able to go hit a land drop, stub this, stub the second one. They're just going to put us to nine. All right, Bloodstained Mire. All right, we're not going to fool around with our opponent here. 
Just gonna fetch another watery grave. Might come back to bite us, but our hand's pretty blue. How are you doing tonight, Nathan? Okay. So your opponent knows how to play against Death Shadow. Hope for Boros. One of these days, bud. All right, so we're trying to clock in here for four. We can't play Gurmag Angler and have Stubborn Denial up, so we're just going to hold up. If my opponent doesn't cast spells, we're going to flash the Snapcaster Mage in and try to speed this clock up a little bit. There's no way we're going to go Stub, Stub, Snap. Well, I guess now... No, I guess we're just not going to tap out. No, that was not good. My life is lacking something right now. This is what we talked about. Kind of in a tough spot here. This where the rubber hits the road. I could just flash this Snapcaster in. I think I'm going to. Because, like, they can do two. If they path my shadow, that's basically the end of the game. They also have six points of burn in hand. They have six points of burn in hand. They just go, cast a spell, cast a spell. They chump. The Eidolon effectively gives them another turn. So this Eidolon's not really going to do a lot. But if they go ta cast two burn spells, put me to three, and then this becomes a nine. If I find a removal spell, I kill them. So I think we're just going to flash this in and hope they don't have a path to exile. They have path. This is pretty devastating. I'm not even sure this is right to do, but all right. So we know they have double spike. I guess we attack first. Well, hang on. This is 6-8. This puts in the 1. Okay. I think we're all right with that. Could have played Gurmag Angler, but I think having double stub slash push up is pretty important. Like, I don't think they can use four cards to kill me here. Risk factor. I'm tempted to take this damage because I want to have this shadow be lethal. So I think I'm going to take this. And go, and now I, now they have to present a blocker. All right, I go to two. Okay. Okay. And we're just going to send it back the same way. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
this is a fun deck to play. It's hard to play, and I tend to be able, what I like about this deck is oftentimes I can pinpoint like where I mucked up and understand like where I made the mistakes that cost me so I can learn. Put in Jace. So he's got a Lightning Bolt and a Death Shadow, and he can get a quick Gurmag Angler if he needed to. So I think I'm going to keep this. We can actually do a, get a Gurmag Angler that kind of preserves our life total. So we can go Lightning Bolt on one. Well, now we're just going to... I want to give myself the option to fetch a Swamp with this. So I think we're just going to play that shot, or play that untapped. I need a Black Source, so I can't just play this and go like fetch shock blue source into like I'm just doing two damage to myself that I don't have to do. One, two, three. This gets three, four, five. I would have to find a bobble in order of this work. All right, well, let's go like this. <clears throat> so bolt go to 16, fetch shock 13. So I think we're just going to go bolt this, play polluted delta, and then just pass. Look to stub something. Or push something. Okay. So we're going to get to push. Oh, I milled over my swamp. Uh, what a tilt. Oh, we still got to use our mana here. They might fire off a spell here. Okay. Now I could, I think we're going to go to go down one more here. We're going to take more damage. This is pointed at my shadow. We're going to stub it. Man, and they ditch the land. Watery grave. We're a little naked, but we've got a lot of power on the board. And like any one of our three battle rages is a pretty sick draw for next turn. Just gonna draw this lightning bolt. Go on the bottom. Three spells and we're at eight. Like it's pretty likely we can totally die from here, but to wouldn't have been correct to play the angler than the shadow to ensure the stubborn denial. Well they only had one mana up, right? I mean I, I could have seek probably sequence like that, but then they only have one mana in that point. All right, that one's good. You get another Boros charm, buddy. Okay. Yeah, they only had one up, right? So even a soft stubborn denial was a hard counter spell. You got two one mana burn spells, man. Or a Boros Charm. Alright, nice. You got deflecting palm. Hmm. 
Not quite. GG's, bud. I was worried, like, I cast this because I was worried about Palm. If I didn't hit this, I was going to Serum Visions first. And then we can check out what I was going to, what I Serum Visions into, which would have been that. And that would have also won me the game. Because I can fetch, like, even if they have a Palm, I can fetch Shaco to one and stub. So we were in good shape. Yeah, the, the, uh... The stubborn denial was effectively just a, count, a negate because they didn't have the mana. But in in general, that would have been the better thing to do there. Um, Bruna, Brunaxaru, Brunax, Brunaxu, or Brunaxar. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know your name's escaping me. Doesn't matter. Yep. So yeah, Nathan. I was really happy with this deck. Like, I played a I played a bunch of the new standard format, and I think this is the this is the best deck that I've played so far. So I know you're pretty busy, but if you're looking to win, I would like to also try to play the Boros Angels deck at some point. That's one of the the Boros Angels deck and the Jeskai deck are basically the only decks I haven't played. Yeah, this deck totally can play Jace. 100%. I played it a couple times. I've always liked Jace in this deck because a Jace that brainstorms to kill somebody is way better than a Jace that brainstorms to like keep you off the back foot. You see so many cards that even though you play such a low land count, as long as you slant the way you play towards making sure that you hit your land drops and grindy games... Then it's good. And also, like, the grindy decks now have... Um, I think we're going to keep this Kozilek. But the grindy decks now have Assassin's Trophy as well, which is going to, like, punish the trophy. The trophy decks. All right. Well, we're going... Operating a little slow now. We're going to get a Blood Crypt here, because this is a hand where we're definitely going to, like, bolt ourselves more than likely. All right. Neither of those are a Death Shadow. Takes target Sylvan Scrying. Ancient Power, Power Plant. What is this one? Oh, more of those losing it. Mine, mine. Yeah, I'll just take this. Sylvan Scrying. When you have, like, the idea of, like, cards seeming awkward in a deck that um, has this many cantrips. And this much manipulation. They put Urza's Tower. They had Tower Power Plant. Okay, so we're looking at... Um, we're looking at... Tron in two turns. Uh, An O-Stone. Well, we're gonna take this O stone. We don't have a, we don't have main deck answers to O stone, so hey, nameless. It's actually quite. <laughs> oh, Nathan. Power plant. You gonna play that? You gonna give us something to use our point this at? A map. Yeah, you got it. Dude, you're up to 9-12? Jesus. Um, we know they have a Ballista, but like, if we're going to play a Shadow, we've got to make sure that it's large enough to survive, or it's big. Man. Let us go get an island, and we're going to... I guess we're going to just snap Serum Visions. I could Inquisition to take out this Ballista. That might be better. We have two removal spells. So this Ballista is going to be a Ballista for four next turn, which I can dismember. I would take four and go to eight. Yeah, I think we just have to find a Death Shadow.
No easy work. Exactly, dude. My wrists are so weak. All right. Probably going to need this at some point, but it's, this is also like not good enough without a Death Shadow. But this makes Death Shadow much better. I think we're just looking for a Shadow like ASAP. Hitting, the, hitting Nasty was good. Inquisitions are useless at this point. <clears throat> yeah, I saw your uh, nameless. I saw you like three trophies already up there, and you said you just barely started playing again. That is not a bad run. Your collective brutalities. Are we getting a sanctum of Eugene? That makes sense. So they're probably, are they not going to play the old walkie boy for another turn? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of winning. This is tough because now they can like sandbag this ballista for a turn. I mean, it could be greedy if we hit, like if we hit, if we hit another threat, then we could have them in a little bit of trouble. Usually turn that off. Spark jacket, thank you very much. Well, you need luck to win in magic. The ballista coming down now. That seems kind of greedy if you have the Sanctum again. It could also mean that they just hit something else. So if I dismember this, if I pay any amount of life, one, two, pay two life, we have three cards, four cards in the graveyard, six mana. I can't pay four life because then we're just dead. Yeah, I guess we're just going to... They're going to pick off my Snapcaster. And then we're just going to attack with the Gurmag Angler. Bolt them, play another Gurmag Angler. I feel like they, they have another payoff. Because if if they didn't have a payoff, I think they would have held this Walking Ballista for another turn. Just because, like, with the Sanctum of Ugin, that means if you wait a turn, then it's Ulamog. And it's difficult for me to kill them from 20 to 0 without a shadow on the board. If there's a shadow on the board, they could die. But. Alright, everyone likes a redraw. I might even hold this lightning bolt for like a Karn or something. That means they hit a worm coil engine. No, Karn. All right, well, at least we're going to get the Karn. But that means they're going to go get Ulamog. So we have to hope that... Because this is, this is nine... This is eight mana. Hope that they don't have another Tron land in their hand. We could hit a discard spell here, too. Like Thoughtseize. Or not. Um... I guess we can just, there's no need. Let's play this full retail, keep my graveyard intact. We're kind of just going through the motions here as this is likely over. <clears throat> this is pretty bad. Yeah, here comes Ulamog. So we're good. We're just going to go to the next one. So we kept kind of a slow hand and got punished a little bit for um, for having the slow hand. So we want the counter spells. We want the Kolagon's commands. I don't want Fatal Push. I usually cut a Snapcaster Mage. The people that are smarter than I am cut some of these, but I don't know. This is a way to get over Worm Coil Engine. Worm Coil Engine resolves. I 
I could just cut my Snapcaster mages. Because I'm, I'm going to be wanting to Gurmag Angler. Which is not really a Snapcaster game. <laughs> yes. It happened. I haven't streamed that Shadow in a hot minute. Probably in like a month. I have to look back on my YouTube channel. Sending another battle rage for speed. I don't know what else I would bring in for it though. I haven't watched it once. I haven't wasted much time in probably a month. You're killing me. Well, three three battle rages can be a lot. But it might be better than a lightning bolt. I could buy that for a dollar. Lightning bolt gets a little better after sideboard when they've got um Drag tusks, like the bolt dismembers, can be kind of important for that. But let's try this. Three battle rages is a lot. But I don't really know if three battle rages is even right to do. I just was like lazy and wanted another card to play against like humans in the banned spirits decks. All right, so this hand, not very dis disruptive, but it is potentially explosive. But it's only explosive if I get to point this at something. I'm not going to be able to point this at anything. So I think we're going to ship this. Yep, we'll keep this one. Keep. And. If we put Angler on top. We just can't, like, we can't put the Angler on top unless we want to play it on turn three. Which is kind of mopey. Let's play this. One, two, three. So mopey. Yeah, I said I submitted. I didn't sub yeah, I got it in there. Like we can put it on top, but I think I'm just gonna like it's just too slow, so I'm gonna end up thoughts scouring you at the end of my opponent's turn. Yeah, Angler on three is, is just too slow, I think. Angler on three with, like, no guarantee of, like, other interaction before that. I think it's just, like, too slow. I'm going to check out my top card here. Because if it's a Gurmag Angler or a it's another Mishra's Bobble, then I don't care about that. Why I did that was because if I wanted that top card, I could have Thought Scoured my opponent and then drew it. And I would have taken another Angler or a um, Street Wraith to, to make the Death Shadow, to play the Shadow. No, I didn't want to, like, so I didn't do the Bobble trick because I was like, no, I should have done the bobble trick. Yeah, I, I'm just a little behind the eight ball here today. I should have, like, bobbled myself. Because if I was going to plan the Thought Scour, I could have done it there as well. Oh, that's tough. They're probably just going to fire this off right now. Which isn't the end of the world. It's kind of the end of the world now because we pretty much just have to fire run this Thought Scour out of here. Because I just need to find like a Thought Seize or something. Could Thought Scour them, but that doesn't really do anything. Okay, we found another Shadow. Alright, we found a Battle Rage. No way. Okay. They were pausing my draw step, and I had a Death Shadow in the graveyard, and I thought they were about to surgical my Shadow in the graveyard.
So if they like map into O stone here, I'm gonna feel pretty bad. But they, they can't do it because of the power plant, but they can just do that next turn. And I don't have a draw that kills my opponent. Unless I like hit Street Wraith and do another way to deal myself damage. Like Street Wraith, Street Wraith, Shot kills my opponent. Street Wraith. Street Wraith to four, Fetch Shock kills my opponent. So I, I need a Street Wraith to win next turn. Turn. My opponent seems pretty savvy. They're sequencing pretty well. They have an Ulamog. That's a pretty solid draw. So we got him next turn. We're pretty soft to a creature like Worm Coil Engine or um, Worm Coil Engine, Thrag Tusk. You know, we might be able to get over some of it though. They can still Thrag Tusk me. That likely buys them enough time. Okay. We gotta, I mean, we're, we're not really beating a dismember because they're going to Ulabog me next turn anyways. So we're just 100% going for this. If we hit a fetch land, we can play around a dismember. Actually, we hit a fetch land, shock land, street race, thought seize, we can beat dismember. Doesn't matter. Crack you for 12. Game three. Yeah, I definitely missed the bobble trick there. Or like I went to do the bobble trick in and in, like with respect to my uh, whatever it is after I fetched, which just wasn't like it could have sequenced better there. A little hot, little behind the eight ball. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Rafi. I appreciate your subscription. We're going to keep this because this is likely either an angler. This is probably an angler on two. Definitely a Gourmet angler on turn two. So my opponent's likely not going to use their mana on their turn, so I'm just going to use this to set up my Thought Scour so that I have a better and more information about what I want to do with my Thought Seize. Okay, so we got the old, we got all Natty going on. Wasn't an awful turn to Serum Visions, but it doesn't kind of fill up the graveyard. Like we want to go Thought Scour and do Thought Seize Angler. And hope that's good enough. How are you doing tonight, Rafi? We should hope they have limited payoffs.
All right, Inquisition's not bad. All right, let's inform our information, inform our discard spell better. So this is where if they had like an O-Stone, we can go Thought Seize. Wow, they just don't have anything. Okay, well, we're going to take this Oblivion Stone. And then get our boy in play. Oh, we're just sitting here going fishing. This might find them a green source. No, it's a crazy thing to do when you can just have Tron. But if they don't have a way to dig, that finds them at least... Which sounds good. That finds them. I mean, at least they can cantrip and then cast this to find like their Sanctum Lugan. Looks like they hit something here. They're just gonna get my butt kicked in court. That's tough. I'm sorry that happened to you. Was it like, did you make mistakes or did you just play? I guess play. Did you like go get, have a tough case or did you go against a, someone that was just better than you are? They might crack this to find an O-Stone. Putting an O-Stone in play can be a little sketchy, but they could hit a Thought Knots here too. Oh, Chromatic Sphere. They're just digging for O-Stone. I had to send a paralegal to track down and retrieve and unclaw for this client. Ugh. That seems rough. All right, so we know three out of the five cards in their hand. Would really like to see a thought seize. Storm Denial is not bad either. So let's see our visions first. We're going to put this on top just because this enables Delve and Death Shadow. And then just like cross our fingers that there's no, there's a Karn. Okay, nice. We can deal with a Karn. We still have our basic island. Oh, the Sanctum of Ugin's not good, though, because the Sanctum of Ugin goes and gets Ulamog. And then it's going to be tough winning after Ulamog. Well, let's let the Sanctum resolve. Because they have power plant tower, yeah, so. So we are in trouble. Chromatic Sphere, that's what they drew for turn. So they played one of these. One of these is gone. That's their hand. No, it isn't. No, it's, it's another Tron piece. Yeah. Oh, this isn't good. Yeah, now we're just dead. We just can't beat this Ulamog. All right, let's go on the next game. A 10 life. It's not even like my opponent. They're at 7. Like, we've only got one more. We have one more Lightning Bolt in our deck. And they have a tower. Yep, needed to draw Thoughtseize. And we did not. All right, let's make it out of here with the old 4-1. Make our profit and jump into one more league for tonight. This is the next deck that I want to try, Nathan. Just this like Jeskai control deck. I want to try this deck a little more next time. I like, oh, where is it? I like the, this card a lot. The fact that like in counter spells, like this can turn into a counter spell or a draw spell is pretty sweet. I hate these mopey four mana draw twos though. Like those just suck. Um, hey dude, that was your last opponent. GG, pardon my troning. You just tron me, man. No, those those are good games. Like I, I 
shouldn't have I, I I kept a hand that was just like dead in the water to Tron in game one. Game two, I think I know I saw that host and I appreciate it. I thank everybody for coming over from what X Dingus Con stream. Thank you all for being here. I hope you're all I hope you enjoyed watching him waste me. You play that standard deck, Rafi? That, that's one that I'm looking to play here. This is a pretty explosive hand. No bobble trick. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I had I had two looks at a uh, I had two looks at a land in the second game. Not the second game. I had two looks at a land or two looks at a thought season in that last um that turn before you were gonna cast a little in game three and just didn't hit and i knew i wasn't beating that thing once i resolved once you were at 10. why do you have a minus the and a few teferis you just not have them oh all right we got the good old little mid-range slugfest going on we're gonna take this thought seize because Thoughtsies takes my two for one or takes my death shadow. Yeah, it's on the stream decker. I don't think the I, I don't know what the command for stream decker. If we two give me a break. Well, if you need some to use, Rafi, I've got them. Hitting this wasn't wasn't horrible either. This is like Death Shadow Street Race 101. Hold your street race. Hang on. They've got five points of burn. This is going to be card number four. Card number five. Card number six. Puts me to nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So put on top. Put on the bottom. And we're just going to get nasty. Gurmag Angler is your better threat in grindy matchups than Death Shadow because it's harder to kill. We are at effective four here, so we do have to close this game out pretty quickly. Yeah, I have real Teferis. I have a Turbo Fog deck from last season, Riff Raff. Clarion's been solid. Whenever I played the green white, to well, I was playing tokens and people were playing the Clarion to kind of get the next shot up there. There's the Black Leaf Cliffs. So we're going to loot, scoot, and booty. Hopefully they pitched this um, Fatal Push so that we can get this shadow down. No, they didn't. They did just a Colagon's command. Lingering Souls is going to be a nightmare. But if they play Lingering Souls, then we can just go Bolt, untap, snap Bolt, and then keep attacking, keep the pressure on. Pyromancer, okay. And this is kind of effectively the same thing. Like, my opponent's probably going to bolt me. And then I'm going to just snap bolt the token and keep the pressure on. Let's see what they're drawing. No, I, I bought that standard deck. Okay. So here's the moment of truth. Do we have enough to like win this game if we just go snap bolt and with a bolt in play? If they take the turn off the blood moon, I think we're gonna kill them. So this is the whole like thing you have to choose when you play Death Shadow. Like you're playing a fast game. There are some cards you're just not gonna beat going long. This blood moon's a card that I'm not gonna beat going long. We can't play around. And we wanna get our snapcast in play. We're gonna give up this death shadow to get a shot in. Because if they take a turn off to Blood Moon, they're just dead. And then we can play two shadows and have a and have this up for next turn. So we're just putting like way too much. Unless they just bolt bolt. 
but they need to impact the board and bolt me in order to kill me. Getcha. Yeah, no, I played, I uh, I bought that deck. I just wanted Teferi's because, you know, I, I wouldn't mind having this a uh, blue-white deck in Modern as well as, like, my backup deck. They are dead as a doorknob. How'd your stream go, by the way? Think it's con. Is that what it is? Think it's con, yeah. Yeah. Gurmag Angler is really good at getting under Mardu. Like they're pretty, they're not very good at actually killing Gurmag Angler. So in this sideboard, we're gonna try to go full grindy mode. Yeah. I don't have a paper event for a long time, Rafi. Like if if I can get those to you, I'll I'll just like let you have those for as long as you need them. So let's try to. We're gonna try to. Like I don't know if this is right to do. We're gonna try to go full grindy here. Now that we're going to board in some just bigger cards. I don't really like any of my spot removal against this deck. I'm going to try this. I think Collective Brutality is better than my spot removal. And we have plenty. We still have got, you know, one, two, these clean up young Pyromancer. We're just going to try this. See if these big boys can pull their weight. It's a lot of three drops to cut so many of our street rates, but we probably can go like this just in case they have a ley line. Yes. Well, Teamer Battle Rage is both the best way to win against Mardu and it is the best way to lose. So, like, it's a difficult card to evaluate. Oh, the next one in the area? God, um, there's regionals in Baltimore, November 11th. And I think that's the next one that I plan on going to. Yeah, this hand is... Uh, it's good, not great. I don't think I'm going to mulligan. Because mulliganing in this kind of a matchup is pretty awful. But... Spirits, Humans, Dredge. I just, like... To tell you... To, to, be up front, like I haven't played this deck in, I don't know, like a month, month and a half or so. And I just threw together a pile of cards I saw. Like I knew Ben Jones was playing a bunch of these and that was his plan against Dredge as well, which I guess is popping back up in Modern because of the Crippling Chill or Creeping Chill. So um, I just picked up three of these, took my fish, which is decent. We're going to sell in for a bit of a long game. Um... I'm going to shock myself because we still do play Death Shadow. And we're going to do this. We're going to crack this bobble in my opponent's upkeep. No, the hand is not so hot. This is one of these hands that you keep because we're playing, because of the deck we're playing against. And we just don't want to mulligan anything that's remotely functional. Takes my time. Like, he's just taking my two for one. Like, we're setting in for a long game. Okay, so there's our watery grave. I don't really think I'm interested in cast and showing them this watery grave yet. I'm going to show them this island because... It's, it can both let me Stubborn Denial something on this turn and Thought Scour. And then next turn I will... Because I don't want to go like play Watery Grave, Collective Brutality them, and then get Blood Mooned. <clears throat> yeah, this hand is a big Uggo. But Uggos and grinding matchups aren't bad. So it looks like they... I would assume this means they boarded out their Blood Moons. If my opponent casts Lingering Souls, I'm going to Thought Scour, and if I do hit another red source, okay. 
So that could be them playing around Blood Moon. I'd like to hit a discard spell. That's not bad either. That's not great. So now let's go fetch. We're just gonna get a swamp. Oh, do we mill over our swamp? Oh, that's tilting. All right, let's get this blood crypt. And now let's check out what they got going on. That sucks, we hit our swamp. Yeah, we're just gonna take their two for one. Yeah, one spell a turn. I don't know, sometimes they do it. Yeah. They're also on the play, so Blood Moon's better on the play. This is a hand that's gonna have a pretty it could have a pretty explosive effect. So they ditched the souls. They kept both of their lightning bolts. They're just not gonna play into this anger of the gods. That's okay, we're just gonna keep making land drops. From play slow. This is a hand where this is the kind of game where like a Jace, we hit a Jace is gonna be dynamite. And we're just gonna anger this. Like we don't get a, too much value out of our anger of the gods, but we just want to keep our life total high while they have double lightning bolt. So we go to 10, be at virtual four, we fetch here. Get this tapped. Now we don't want any of these. Snaring Bridge, okay. So we have a Kologon's command to deal with that, but that is somewhere in our deck. Could have like Snapcasters. I probably should have snapped Serum Vision. But I got a little snap Thought Scour under my at my turn. But we don't have any lightning bolts left in our deck. We just have one Kologon's command. So this thing's going to be tough. We're going to have to either ultimate a Jace or to do this. I should have Snap Serumed. That would have been a better play. But instead, we're just going to Snap Thought Scour. Bolt me. Okay. So this is them just keeping their hand, emptying their hand out. Yeah, I mean, this is still a pretty large problem. All right. So return, return target creature from your graveyard, destroy target artifact. Um, do we want to start a Snapcaster loop, or do we just want to get them dead? We probably just want to kill them. Especially considering we have this Stubborn Denial. Probably should just attack first, because they might not... Like, even if they waste the Lightning Bolt and the Snapcaster, we're cool with it. God, I really want to set up a snap loop. Return snap. Let's 
Yeah, now that that's gone. I don't want to play a long game against a Bedlam Reveler, though. I was thinking to myself, man, we like theoretically could kill him this turn, but he's at 13, so that, that's not exactly going to work. If my opponent plays a Bedlam Reveler, we're probably just going to like untap. Here's a Bedlam Boy. Okay. We're going to untap and dismember this, probably paying full retail. They ditch a Dread War. They, they know I have seven wall, though. Let's see what they're drawing. I don't really want to go to six. Like, they could have still two lightning bolts in their deck with a little bit of reach. Blood Moon. Okay, Blood Moon's okay. So we're just going to let Blood Moon resolve. We do have to fetch in order to have them dead next turn if they cast Blood Moon. But I guess we can just wait for them to put Blood Moon on a stack to do that. We can just stay at seven. Yeah, I milled over the Swamp. The Swamp's right here. Okay, nice. See, I don't even think this matchup's that bad. Like, they, they, they aren't good. We're just going to do this. Like they are good at killing Worm Coil Engine or killing uh, Gurmag Angler. Okay. They just Rabble and Moon. I'm probably gonna cast that after combat. Actually, I'd have to. They'd have to have three Lightning Bolts to kill me, but even that, because I, I take one counter one. I don't want to get Bedlam Revelered again. Yeah, we'll just take the Pyromancer. We're going to take the Pyromancer and hope they don't rip their last Lightning Bolt. Because they can't Fatal Push this and Thoughtseize. Did you hit it? Did you hit the last bolt, bud? Nope, we got it. Okay, we got the four one. Sweet. <clears throat> GG's OP. All right, let's jump back into another league. Yeah, I mean the decks. Once you understand the mechanics of the deck, it's just, it's just hopping on a bicycle again. Like <clears throat> there are some finicky death shadow things that, that are associated with, with this deck. But why do this a lot worse? If they run Phillies, you talk about the veil, because yeah, like really out of the veil is such a beating. I remember back when this deck, when the shadow deck was really good, and people used to play like. A million. Uh, like three Lilianas in their sideboards for the mirrors. Alright, I would like to play first. Yeah, this hand's fine. A lot of velocity. A lot of filling up the graveyard. Yeah. Liliana of Veil is just the best card against Death Shadow. One of my favorite cards. I wish that I could play it. I wish I could play more of it. 
but it's just not that great at the moment. All right, so we're going to get nasty. Next turn. Reserve until next end step. All right, looks like we're going to do some grinding. Hey, DHOV thirty one Philly. I feel like playing Shadows and Shuffle Valley these days. It looks good actually playing that league. I played Burn, Dredge, and Counters Company. That is what we played. We're going to do this in case we can hit a Tarmogoyf with a Dismember or hit like a lazy, if they've got like a Raging Ravine into a discard spell. I just took a break. Shadow Tribe Mid Rangers with Jason and Rolls Cryptic Family Guard. It's going to take a break playing this deck. Pyromancer. Okay, well, this is going to be painful. This is one of those hands where if we don't find a Death Shadow to thread the needle here, we're in a lot of trouble. Because we've already done so much damage to ourselves. At least that's going to fetch us our island if they try to moon us this turn. But we have to stub the moon anyways. How you doing, Dean? I saw you fired up your stream last night. My work schedule switched up to where I'm not up that late at night anymore. Well, this is some sad stuff. This is the world we live in, ladies and gentlemen. My opponent's just going to be like licking their chops right now. How'd you like it? There's less humans nowadays. <clears throat> Another four one losing to Dredge. Yeah, Dredge is good. Easily the best card. I'll probably play it at regionals. Do you like it? So like so like what problem does it fix, Dean? Like like when I think of the issues that Jun Shadow had, I think that the issues that it had, and even that bleeds over a little bit here into Grixis, is like Field of Ruin is a problem. Like, small, go-wide creatures are a problem. So, like, what does the trophy fix when it comes to that? Unless you have a different... I'm going to dredge right now. It's so good at the moment. Yeah, dredge is a good... Dredge is a solid deck. I think it still lacks raw power. Like, there are going to be matchups where, like, dredge... Where you do, like, the dredge thing where you have the virtual kill, and the virtual kill doesn't matter. And, like... I'm not sure Creeping Chill speeds that up. Like, there are going to be some decks that you just, like, put eight power into play on turn two, and it just doesn't matter. Um, what are we doing? I guess we can just... We probably should just snap... We could snap Inquisition. No, see, I already made a mistake. I don't have a... This is just Thought Scours in my graveyard. Yeah, so we've already muffed up here. How do we fix this? We just, like, don't. We just toss away a free scry, which sucks. Because we can't do anything.
So let's just try to fix our mistake as best we can because we don't have a serum visions, which is unfortunate. It's just a light upgrade over decay. Kind of cool. So probably like ley lines and mains nice. Yep. Yeah. But like Death Shadow is a deck that can that doesn't necessarily feel the brunt of Trophy's issues. That's why I think Trophy is actually a better cyber card. Well, so I think that Death Shadow um Death Shadow is a deck that doesn't really care about that. Especially Jun Shadow doesn't care about that advantage they give their opponent. Because if their opponent gets to the point where they can use that advantage, they're likely losing anyways. I might actually just snap bolt a token. Then just start trying to attack to chew through this Lingering Souls. Let me see what they're drawing. Drawing a Bedlam Reveler. That doesn't do anything. Um, I'm going to Thought Scour. I'll just keep the cards coming. And then, like, if they want to chew through, as long as we hit, like, a threat, then we'll be able to get around this Lingering Souls. Tannen, I don't, I don't need you in here getting all, getting all sassy about my one true love. Damn it. Now we're just dead in the water. We probably end up just pushing one of these tokens. As bad as that feels. Should have done that in the other order. Should have stubbed first, made him pay for it, and then push this. Yeah, your cyborg, the only cyborg cards that Jun Shadow has are like. Your nut traverse targets, which are like Kataki. Uh, attached to the game, free resources, great levels here, thoughts of yoga, cover the expensive bombs. Yeah. Like, yes and no. I mean, you have discard spells, right? All right. So, like, we need ourselves a Gurmy boy pretty soon here. Like, the Gurmag Anglers, like your discard spells take out the top end. And then you've got. Yeah, I do have Thought Scout. God, you ripped the Bedlam Rebel. That's some savage shit. So we need Death Shadow like into Battle Rage, and then my opponent has nothing. Alright, step one. Um, I should play this. So that I can block this and then keep this growing. Like, in case they want to, like, bolt this thing. Yeah. That was wishful thinking, but... <clears throat> I never understand what the term negative tempo or, like, or, like, what the actual term of tempo, like, means... Like, I always think we're going to do the weird sideboard again because we're just trying some sweet cards out. Um, I always thought that, like, tempo was when you trade a resource with your opponent and, like, stranding them with, like, awkward turns or allowing you to double spell. It was a big thought scour. Big Thought Scour fan. But yeah, we're going to go just the full-on grind plan just to, like, try this out. We added a bunch of fun, sweet toys to our sideboard. We're going to play them in this league. Like, one of my favorite things to do whenever I play Death Shadow is to, like, strand my, like, just use my discard spells to, like, cause turns where I can explode. Like, I can go, 
disc like if you have three mana open i'm going to discard spell your two drops so you have like an awkward next turn so you can only do like one thing and then i can use my counter spells or my removal spells to leverage that and then untap and go like Gurmag shadow stubborn denial Jace is, I think Jace is kind of sweet in this deck. It is not good right here. But like, oh geez. At least it's, at least we can like guarantee Gurmag Angler if we hit a land. Um, I think that a, an offensive Jace is, is much better than a defensive Jace. And like in all reality, if you think about like the core makeup of a Death Shadow deck, it's a deck that can use a Brainstorm a, a pretty well. Because you have so many cards that are dead in the late game, like discard spells, street rates, and fetch lands when you're too low, that if you can get there and you can shuffle them away, that's what you're looking for. That's pretty nice. So we're going to bobble them now, even though they can see that we have that land, because we want a Thought Scour into Angler. But we, we want that second land more than we care about my opponent knowing that we have the second land. Yeah, you, but you also spent one mana to gain information and to dictate the pace of the game, which is what I think tempo is. Like, I think it's like how when you're in control of what's going on. Like, you're the one that's trying to dictate the direction the game is trying to go. And you, you want to try and fight the like choose the axis that these games are going to be played on. But I think the I think the um I think the Jun Shadow deck is much more of like here's a threat, here's a threat, here's a threat, can you kill it? than a game that can um go long and the, uh, than a deck that can go long and go toe to toe with other decks because you're just looking to like discard spell, discard spell traverse, Tarmoic Death Shadow, and you're just like, is this good enough? So like the Assassin's Trophy, I think that you're, I, I think Assassin's Trophy is like good in the in the Traverse Shadow decks. I don't think it fixes the issues. Like it's obviously an upgrade. Like you're gonna play it over Terminate and Abrupt Decay. But I don't think that it necessarily fixes issues that the deck has. That's what I'm thinking. Well, that's because the Jun Shadow deck is a, is a linear creature deck. You just do your linear thing with discard spells and huge threats, and just enough removal to stay by. Yeah, that, that's why, like, like you're, you're hoping that, um, like, like a deck like the, the Grixis Shadow deck would struggle a little more with a card like Assassin's Trophy, but Jun Shadow is like, that's just fine. Like, you're just like, whatever, I'm just gonna, like, take a card get solve a problem and overpower you and just kill you before you can set up like yeah if you might get like and it's not like there are cards in the format that are punishing you like if you have a decent board a teferi a turn early that tucks a creature isn't necessarily like i think you have to build it with a lot of counter spells like you're probably playing what three counter spells in your deck. You've got to have at least three, if not four stubborn denials in your deck, right? To help make up for that a little bit. There's a lot going on with it. All right, so we're going to Thought Scour now because we don't want our opponent to take our Thought Scour. We don't care if they take an Angler. Like, we just want to have our engine set up. I agree with your assessment. I don't think assessment really solves problems that Jun just needs to solve, but it's just a better version of it. Yes. Yep. It's like a, this kind of sucks. 
They're probably just going to take my uh, Anger of the Gods because the second Angler is going to be so slow. I really took an Angler. So they probably have an answer to this Angler. God, man. You're killing me. So we're going to get... We're going to get a Blood Crypt here so that we can Anger the Gods. But we're going to like probably hold this fetch land. Oh, I should have left two Thought Scours and gotten rid of I thought I had to delve one more card. A Pyromancer would be pretty annoying. Dreadbore's super annoying. Now the game's just like wicked over. I can't mulligan against this Mardu deck. At all. Something that I tried, I, I played a little bit of Esper Shadow. Oh no. Nope. Uh, test. We're still good here. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, this Mardu deck isn't... I don't think it's awful. I think it's very draw-dependent. Like, there's... They're just, like, saying... They're just, like, baiting a Blood Moon in me. I don't think we can, like, theoretically beat Blood Moon. Or realistically beat Blood Moon. Well, maybe we could have. Yeah, that planes is a little a little sketch. Let's put this on the top. Let's put this on the bottom. Let's put this on top. Let's just we're gonna do this now because we drew one more. And it might like I don't know. It might let them flood the board with some spirits. The last thing I want to do is play my Liliana when they have four lingering souls tokens in play. God. So we know they have blood moon in their deck. Yeah, we're good. We got noogied. We got noogied in that round. We just beat the Mardu deck in the last, what, was it the, the fifth round of our last league? I'm going to grab a drink. I'll be right back. Anger the Blood Moon. All right. Let's win four in a row. Open up. Uh, we can get some chests. I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out tonight. I hope you're all having a fine, fine, uh, fine Thursday night. It's almost the weekend. I've got a great weekend set up. It's my first anniversary this weekend. So my wife and I are heading out on the town or heading on a little weekend getaway, which I'm pretty excited about. Philly's um, Megan's sister lives in D.C. and she's coming down here to stay with Philly for the weekend. So the old Philly boy. Yeah, that sounds fun too. It sounds like we have good weekends for a lot of people in this chat. We're, we're not keeping the five under. This hand is not very good, but I'm not going to mulligan it. Like, hopefully we're playing against a creature deck and Bolt and Snapcaster. Like, if we're playing against a creature deck, this hand's like, we're going to put this on top. It's going to be slow, but we're going to have to get to it. That would be... Philly would like that. Though Philly is just... Um, he's actually just... Okay. The old Lava Spike... 
goodness. There's been a lot of burn on Moto recently. I guess burn's like on the up and up. I think we're okay drawing that bobble because that bobble is just going to help enable Delve. Like it's just a free card that we can pitch. Like it's, it is a slow trip, but it's at least something. And we don't, like, I don't want to just take damage because we're going to have to fetch to kill this now. But if they didn't play this, I didn't want to fetch it away. If they played like a. I don't know. They played something like a monastery. Or if they didn't, like, if they just went spell, spell, I was going to get this untapped anyways. And it would just suck to have to waste it. Bloodstained Mire. <clears throat> Alright, so we can go... A very painful thought he's in the granular back to your roots figured you dude i, I was for i was forcing the turbo fog for a little while we were all about that life all right well we've got to start trading some resources here skull crack bolt Take an efficient one. So we can't cast another one. We can go to eight, which puts us to two, which means we're dead to the top of their deck. But we're not really winning any other way. Pan was just a little too slow to get off the to get off the floor. I really checked it out. I think that I think all the best arts come from the old lands. I got it. Wait, I, I think I think at least the the um No, I just played I played the main deck that I've been playing for a while and I just threw a bunch of cards in my sideboard that I wanted to play. Like, I do like Jace a lot in this deck. So I was, I was excited to play with that. If you would have played Blood Grip Tapped. You meant Bolt on my second, on my second turn of the game. AP Inch. Warp by converted mana cost. Good in and out. Good, easy in and out. Yeah, Avatar just now. Seems easy. My third turn. Well, I bolted. Play blood grip tap. I guess bolt on my turn. We played against burn. I played against burn twice tonight, and I played the steamkin deck twice. So like maybe the brutalities are on their way up in the format. Though the, the Steamkin deck seems pretty awful. This hand's pretty good. A lot of interaction. If we hit a second land, we're in pretty good shape. And like we don't really have to worry about the damage as much because we have a Death Shadow. And the games slow down a little bit after sideboard. Throw out a foundry. Oh, this hand is garbage. Let's get rid of this guide. Which means that likely means that our second thought sees is gonna win, which kind of sucks. Just a suspended rift bolt. They're drawing another lightning. All right, so we can thought seize a lightning helix, and then go get an island in serum visions. Let's go do that for now. There's a hundred percent chance we're gonna want to do this.
That's nice. Because next turn we can play Shadow, play Angler, and have Stubborn Denial. It goes against the nature of the decks. Nature of the deck and stuff. She's playing Shadow. What do you mean, Freak Mania? So, Arid Mesa right there. So, we know they have Lightning Bolt. Let's do this right. Let's cast Gurmag Angler to start. Let's just keep the Serum Visions in the graveyard. Because we're not going to be able to th discard spell them for the rest of the game. My opponent should have, probably should have fired off their Lightning Bolt in response to that Angler. Well, sometimes you don't. And that's the real beauty of playing the deck. When you can manipulate that line and you can like tiptoe with Death Shadow, that's when that's when it gets awesome. That's why this is some of my favorite matches. Like this is some of my favorite magic to play. Now I, I want to just actually lose life. But not too much. Eight. Done. Uh, fetch shot, 10 puts them to 8. Yeah, we don't need to. I guess, no, I should have. I, I See, I just punted there. I should have shocked. I did my math wrong because then it makes the Gurmag Angler lethal. And now if they rip a creature, they have a blocker. All right, so it's good to know about that one. Though we already do bring in our Colorgon's commands. Yeah. When you're playing against Burn, like, there's two different ways to play Burn. There's, like, you go right into the Burn player, and you make it so, like, there's no way they can enact their game plan without dying, or you win a real long game. And when th those games where you, like, where you just go headfirst into the Burn player is, like, my favorite kind of magic. It's so, some of the most fun. Yeah, I, I used to play two of braids. I played a braid when, like, the Hollow One deck was kind of the premier graveyard deck, but the Hollow One deck is, is not the premier grave one, graveyard deck at the moment. And this is a discard spell into a Gurmag Angler on two. The second Gurmag Angler is likely not super dead. I think I'm going to keep this hand. I like Gurmag Angler on two. This is a hand that's not going to deal a lot of damage. And if we hit a second land, Inquisition is going to be pretty solid. And like I, I think it's good to have this little ace in our hole here. We're a long ways off of it, but with any luck between Goblin Guide and... Um, and just the game going hopefully long, which we're trying to do, we get there. Yeah, I, I'm a big I'm a I'm a big Leyline fan. I don't have I didn't play them today, but the last two SCGs I've been to, I've registered four ley lines. I did I registered four ley lines for all of PTQ season. Red, white. Oh, are you kidding? Oh, man. This is no reason to not do this. God, what a what a beating. Oh, don't do that. Let's go like this. Oh, I should have. Well, if we get this Death Shadow in play, we should be okay. So we have two denials. We just need this game to go longer. And we're going to get rid of this Eidolon. Because even though we could K-Command it. On turn one, because I wanted to set up the Angler. 
and I didn't think I did I, and I didn't think about this to be right up front with you. Like th this went over my head. Why not in GDS? Yeah, I think all those are pretty solid at the moment. Yeah, the whole Inquisition on one, I didn't even didn't even do it. The good thing is, with this coming off suspend, if we can find a thought seize or a way to deal damage to ourselves and we're kind of in business, that'll do it. Hitting a fetch line would be sweet because we could get our Colorgon's command in play. All right, thought seize. Thought seize is also good because now we can like thought seize stub and get this thing in the way. Eight puts us to six. I think we. I think I kind of want to let this go. The problem is if I let this go and, I, and they whiff. Because like if I stub this, take a card, they can rip a bolt off the top and kill my shadow. So we're gonna let this go. Take that. And now our shadow is protected. Well, didn't really matter. That right there was a big brain, big, big brain play. Wow, game is over, dude. Shadow is way bigger than the previous administration's boy. Let me tell you what. Surprise, no block there. I think as burn players, they should chump against Death Shadow a lot faster because. You're never gonna beat Team or Battle Rage. So if you get lower, it enables it just gets rid of your chump and you want the game to last as long as possible. Yeah, I mean, that was just like the right thing to do. So now we have the fetch land checkmate. I guess there's no reason to play that. Like, if we're going to be 100% super on top of it, we shouldn't have. I mean, I put a mulligan, and this was effectively a mulligan because of how we drew. Like, this card didn't do anything. And, like, especially against our draw. Now, like, if we hadn't drawn these shadows, it would have been a very good card. But because we drew these shadows, we didn't need these anglers. We're already in it. These are moving fast tonight, which is sweet. This whole league's moved fast. Like I think we've only been streaming. We're streaming for like an I've been playing for like an hour and thirty-five minutes and we're into our sixth match. Uh this hand. This hand's like I don't know, like I think. Definitely gonna get punished if I see a creature deck on turn one. This hand's pretty awful. Tron. Checking out a YouTube video. Three shadows. Um, we're so dead because, like, I do want this card because I, I want like some form of disruption, but like, we're never casting these snapcaster mages. Like, I'm just gonna draw this. I hope it works out because it's the best card to snap back. I have to scrap this one out. Double con. You don't say. All right. 
let's take a card. I don't think we can wait on the draw. We're dead. Unless we like miracle. Well, actually, let's check this out. All right. Oh my god, we're gonna do it. We're gonna wait for our opponent to crack this. Because even if they don't crack it, then we just stub this O stone. Thought sees the Karn. Now we're gonna draw the stub. That's why like Mishra's Bobble is Mishra's Bobble and Street Wraith are so good with Serum Visions that you're just like you're just making such a huge fundamental error if you don't play four Serum Visions in your deck. That's a little odd. In my opinion. But what are you gonna do? No, we need to stub this Karn. Oh, well, I just wanted to fire off like as many thought seasons as I could do as I could set up to tell you the truth. And I didn't think about whether like it was better to do it on turn one or turn two. But like there's definitely an argument. Yeah, it probably was better to see your visions now that I think about it. Yeah, because Seer Visioning on turn two was no different than Seer Visioning on turn one, or Thought Seizing on turn one. Because we would have done it... Well, I mean, if we had Thought Seized on two, we wouldn't have hit this line, but that's, like, pretty set up to with what our opponent's hand is. So I don't really understand this play from them. It's like, either they just have a sick read on... Um, on my stubborn denial or they're messing with me yeah like this is like they're just like literally playing around everything that I'm doing perfect here that's a little frustrating makes me think there's something weird going on I'm not sure they're a good like a good Tron player because they literally just played around every single thing that I could do there, which included a very odd play of bobbling into my top card. So like, yeah, we're good. How's it going, Teddy? Yeah, but like, well, no, it, it can cost you a lot to play around something like that, Rafi. If I hit, like, those cards are, theoretically, those cards are safer on the stack than they are in your hand because of the ratio of discard spells to counter spells I play. At least it's magical because if anyone knows. I too hate when my opponents play around. They okay, come on. You're just you're killing me here. You're killing me, Mike Laflame. Let's go here. We're gonna ditch our fatal push. I like cutting Snapcasters against Tron and going down on the bolt. It's not like they knew we didn't have a stub already. Yes, but like, I don't know. It's a very odd sequence of plays that like, maybe this is like me being a little salty because like I found my line that like theoretically got me through the puzzles. But like, they didn't play their Karn, which leaves, like, I actively think it's right for them to play their Karn after I keep a card on top even if I bobble into it because I'm setting up Delve. Like, that Karn is safer on the stack than it is in their hand. <clears throat> <coughs> I 
Take one from your playbook. Yeah, we've got one on the sideboard. For now, I literally just grabbed this deck and went nuts with it. Yes. <clears throat> you wrong. Dude, Snapcaster doesn't win you these games, Teddy. You're goddamn right it is, Nick. You're goddamn right it is. Okay, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad, but it turns bad really quickly. Like, this deck does pivot very well. Yeah, we're going to ship this one. Uh, this hand is garbage. At least my opponent mulligan. Way to keep it even. Oh, they mulligan further. Uh, we're going to put this... I guess this just, like, is a redraw that helps enable my Gurmag Angler. So even though it's not like a discard spell or a cantrip, it's at least something to get me working towards Delve. We have an Ulamog on top that they don't know is there. Oh, he's not dash. It'll be sweet right here. <coughs> All right, take it easy, Alexander. Espen? Alexander Spin? All right, we're chugging up to this, this old Gurmag Angler. We need a Street Wraith or a Bobble, and we can do it next turn. Maybe we'll beat our opponent's mulligan to five. I don't think we're going to, because this card is the stones. I guess they're pretty far off. I mean, they're only, they're not that far off of Tron. I shouldn't have fetched there, but it is what we did. It's not too far off as Ulamog. Oh, now they're kind of far off the Ulamog. Oh my god, this Ulamog is just going to mess me up so bad if they find it. But I don't think we can take this Ulamog. I think I have to take this Sylvan Scrying. Because it turns pretty clunky next turn. Like they're going to go map for a Tron, please play Tron, please play Star. Yeah. It never feels really good leaving somebody with an Ulamog, but. You know, Thought Scout would have been sweet there. Guild through this turn. Hope you're having a good night, Nick. This is so they drew a land. That's got to be what's going on here. They drew forest. Holy shit. Oh, I forgot they were doing this now. I forgot they were, they, Tron's been doing this for a little while. So I guess we're going to fetch a plane on an island. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to be just a two, three timer wave after this. And we can still hold up this stainful stroke. Wait for like a thought not seer. Yeah, I forgot Tron's been doing this for a little while. Get this out of here. <coughs> yeah, I just think that's too slow. Like, I think you can snap thought seize them all they want. This card's got this deck has like a million cantrips in it. And it is eventually going to do what it's going to do, and you have like Gert, you have to kill them. I haven't tried Arena. It looks great though. Like it is, it is by far the the thing of the future. And if I, if I was looking to like do anything with streaming, then I would 
I would be playing a rematch. Probably not going to crack that, though. We just did that so that maybe they don't block next turn. Yeah. They got us. They got us. That's why this deck is just so good at putting itself together. It, it's like, like, this deck is so, like, what makes these Ancient Stirrings decks and these Chromatic Sphere decks so good is you cannot effectively discard spell them. Because their deck's in, like, 100% cantrip. Not 100%, but this deck's got... I mean, if you want to count, like, they've got four of these. They have four, eight, 12, 16, 20 cantrips in their deck that are focused on doing what they do. Especially that they can find Sanctum of Ugin. <clears throat> That's why, like, keeping the Snapcaster Mages in, Teddy, are, is over Gurmag Anglers, at least, is poor. Like, you can keep some Snapcaster Mages in, Sure, but I would not have the first Snapcaster Mage in at the cost of a Gurmag Angler. Because they're just too good at they're too good at doing what they do. And if you try to go toe to toe with them, that's why Jun never beats that deck. Because Jun doesn't effectively like doesn't turn the corner and kill them. One of my friends that uh well you've met I don't know if you've met Tom, Mike, but Tom um doesn't like tom does not like arena doesn't like moto but loves arena it's why these decks are good and it's why i was i was trying to and i think I've, I've ultimately given up on this i was trying to get my get reps with the ironworks deck in order to be able to play ironworks because that deck is also busted because that deck has 25 cantrips in it so it just always does what it does like these colorless decks these colorless decks have more cantrips in them than storm decks do almost more cantrips in them than this deck does here yeah i hear it's really good mike like tom hates playing moto but loves playing arena god if this was a swamp like we're gonna keep this but if this was a black land this hand would be the absolute stones I've played Dredge in the past. We're playing against Catlight. All right, I'm going to keep this. She's playing um, Storm, I think. So we've got a pretty solid matchup here. We'd like to hit a Black Land on turn one. If we don't hit a Black Land, this is kind of awkward. Oh, come on. So what do we do now? Do we just run this Death Shadow out? Like I guess she could go Manamorphose, kill it. Now let's not get greedy. We'll just Thought Caesar. This is a dangerous one where she doesn't have to do a lot to kill me.
So I think this is a pretty easy gifts. If they play Electromancer, we dismember it. Play Shadow. We're at a pretty low life total. We got to end the game pretty quickly. If she plays Remand, we stub the Remand, we land Shadow. And then if she plays Electromancer, we kill the Electromancer and then have the next Gifts uh, getting ready to tag that. So I think we just take a Gifts. <clears throat> You're taking a Ritual. I don't think the Ritual does anything. Like, if she wants to shoot the Ritual off two Gifts on her turn three, then it takes away the value of the Gifts. They're at such a low base that it doesn't really matter. So that's what they kept on top. Does the ritual speed up the clock if you're wasting a a uh, ritual to produce mana while this Electromancer isn't in play? <clears throat> I mean, technically, I would have shadowed. You would have just played Shadow on one. I just would have hated it if she would have gone, like, Ritual. Um, if she would have gone Ritual into Grave Shot. Or, like, Manamorphos Grave Shot. Okay, so we know most of the hand. I think that's two mana. All right, let's take a look at what's going on here. So we're definitely going to dismember this. And then it's just a two-turn clock and we have stubborn denial. We're just going to make sure that... No, the problem... Well, yeah, because then it's just a two-turn clock and we just have to hope that her draw step in between gifts and that her one, one card we don't know about isn't grape shot or a way to like dig because then we've got her as long as she doesn't have as long as this one card isn't grape shot like we're good if it's grape shot we lose but we likely lose anyways because of this remand so yeah we're just gonna dismember this stub the remand give her one draw step no, we're going to stub the remand. She doesn't have enough mana to go off here. There's like there's only one card that's unknown. And she she's just going to run out of mana before she can do anything. <clears throat> Like, she can go Ritual, Ritual, Gifts with a Red Floating. Anamorphose is, is decent. It doesn't get her anywhere, though. So now we know, now we have perfect information. So make mana here. Yeah. 
like that one card had to be another ritual and then i likely could could uh set these gifts piles like i could likely screw her on the gifts piles here because she just doesn't have enough mana to get cards plus um creatures so we're gonna bring in these because empty the warrens is what kills us more often after sideboard these definitely come in um i don't like the dismembers because i turn into a little bit of a burn deck cut this as well shave one of these i can bring in a battle rage brutality is actually like kind of medium because they board out their electromancers and it being a two mana discard spell is a little slow you could shave an angler be a little more reactive on a draw with something like this could also cut a snapcaster because it's a little slow my whole deck's just a tad slow on the draw. I don't think, I think this is what we're going to do. Three Anger of the Gods might be a bit much. Yeah, the third Battle Rage is like decent, but I don't know what it's worse than. Like, I want like just enough removal. The Brutality is like a discard spell. If I'm cutting a Gurmag Angler, I don't want three Battle Rages. Yeah, because one of their best ways to win, Rafi, is like just the quick turn two ritual, ritual, ritual. Um, like they they have a better way to kill me with empty the warrens than um, than anything else. I think I'm gonna board it. I'm gonna I'm gonna switch one of these. Like I'm gonna cut this on the play and bring this in on the play. But on the draw, I just want I want like on the draw on the play I want to be more aggressive. On the draw, I just want to have more cards to get in there because it's gonna be harder for me to disrupt them. Uh, I'm gonna mulligan. Pan just doesn't. It doesn't have a discard spell. It doesn't have like a cantrip. Just a bit too slow. Well, if there's a thought seize on top of my deck, maybe like I don't think I can go to five, but this hand easily could lose. I got a discard spell. Oh, stubborn denial. Like, four spiking a turn two play might be okay, but it's not. It's not going to be anything to write home about. This in conjunction with Snapcast Rage is going to be decent. I'm going to keep this. I think it's better than a random draw, but we need to hit like if we can go stub on one and if we draw a Street Wraith and we can go double shadow on two. That's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't have, like, the, the Gurmag Angler felt like a mulligan. And um, the Gurmag Angler felt like a mulligan there. I was already at six. And I didn't have a discard spell or a counter spell. Yeah, but it needed two lands. Like, that, that hand needed lands and disruption. And on seven, I don't think that's enough to keep it. I'm going to snap counter a ritual here. I don't know. I don't think I didn't. I don't remember if I saw a fetch land. The first during the first uh, during the first game or not? No. So they're not playing Blood Moon. We're gonna flash us. We're likely gonna flash a Snapcaster Major at the end of the turn here. Storm is a, is a good matchup, but Storm's a good deck. It's a deck that can definitely overpower people.
So what do I want to get here? Am I gonna need to cast two blue two blue spells a turn? Or is it important for me to have red to start to have I think we're just so far off of like our hand is so blue and black that I just don't think that I could get a steam vents. Steam vents feels pretty bad though. I'm just gonna get a blood crypt. Some storm decks do. Yeah, see now we're punished hard for that, but I should have just gotten the second grave. Like, like we're in such a tough spot that I probably should have just like foregone the anger of the gods plan and just tried to interact on the stack. Bolt me. Bolt me. Okay. Got to see some fireworks here. All right, I don't really want to add to the storm count. So if I tap, if I if I stub this, they still just pay for it and they can empty. So if I was gonna stub one, it's the first one. Yeah, I'm just like not gonna. But I had two stubborn denials here. Would this have mattered? I could have cut them off two mana here. We have Past and Flames kind of covered though, right? Because they need four mana. Oh. Is that Comics? Not much out there anymore. Yeah, thank you, uh, Knuckle, Nicola Company. Um, I think we just let, I think we probably just let all of this go. Like, if they go to, if she commits to a past in flames, I can stub the past in flames. Scrape shot for five. Okay. Does she have another grape shot? Looks like another grape shot. Yeah. Not gonna make her put it put it on the stack. Is that mean? I don't think we could have, maybe with two blue sources, we could have done something there. We probably could have, like, it, it was probably just right for me to do that. Yeah, that wasn't, that was, that was poor. That was a very poor play from the home team. Hopefully we get a little bit more of a functional seven. That six was solid if we'd have hit. Like, we would have put some serious pressure on her. All right, so this hand sees a lot of cards. We have three lands. We've got our anger set up. We have a thought season. We get to look at three more cards by turn two. And we get a scry with some of them. So I think I'm going to keep this hand. Though, like, I don't think we can mulligan, but this hand's not that great. This is on, like, the low end of keepable here. Battle rage is greater than angler. <clears throat> I don't, I'm not bringing in three battle rages if I'm cutting creatures to use them on Teddy. This is kind of awkward because we're then we're now in another land off of this anger. God, I hate this anger of the gods. One makes fun of me for playing Radiant Flames. 
Yeah, she's drawing a spire block canal. All right, so there's empty. So let's just take this Brawl. She's gonna find her lands, and then the Brawl is what's gonna get her off to the ground. <coughs> we already know she has a land on top. All right, well, that wasn't great. I'm playing against Cat Light. I'm going to fish for a... Um, Fisher's Bobble show Blood Crypt. All right, I'm going to go get a Steam Vents with this. I'm going to, like, I doubt that she's going to shock herself. I'm going to put it into play tapped. But I doubt she's going to shock herself for this sleight of hand. All right, so then we're going to be able to get nasty next turn, which is decent. And this is going to get her to think, like, she's good enough to... Even if we don't have Stubborn Denial here, she's going to think about it. <clears throat> Bane. Whew. Did not think about that. Oh, that's going to kill me. That's just going to wreck me. I just don't have any answers to that thing. Oh, this thing's going to kill me. Uh, so we just got to like serum visions, look for a way to get this clock going. Because we know like they're going to be able to flip this thing pretty easily. We're going to want the shadow. And I guess we can keep up appearances here. No, that's fine. Yeah, I just missed this. I, I haven't played modern in a hot second. We just got to put some pressure on her. <laughs> I popped in cat's stream about an hour ago. Yeah, this thing just could, this thing's going to win you the game. We can go snap thoughts he's attack, play shadow, and then maybe set something up where we can put a, like a chump blocker into this thing. We're likely gonna have to try to play around it hitting me though. Because once it hits me, it's gonna be able to just uh, grape shot pretty easy. It's not a it's it's kind of a nombo. With oh they don't have lands that's nice. It's kind of a nombo with uh, empty. So I wonder if. Hmm. I didn't say anything to make the yeah that's even for sure i just didn't even know yeah like she's she's gonna get me with this for sure 
We're just going to snap thought season, play a shadow. <coughs> and I don't know, there might be a world where she can't flip this thing and then we get to anger it away next turn and then deal with you know the empty the war in some other way she's sitting on like a noxious revival and then a noxious back pops passing playing grave shot oh. so i gotta take this opt because if she kept a ritual or a land on top, then she just killed me. Like I, I like it makes sense for her to either keep a ritual or to keep a land on top of her deck with this hand. So the card that plays around things the best is Yeah, I mean we're dead unless there's a land on top, and then she blocks next turn. So we're going to take this opt, play this shadow, and hopefully she has a land on top of her deck. Sleight of hand. So we have to fade a lot of draw steps here. Okay, so that's going to flip thing. So she puts me to one. And then we got to deal with this grape shot and the board. Oh, we drew the battle rage. She's got me. It's kind of a feel bad-ish. She just leveled me and I, I didn't know and she was on one level above me. So... Yeah, so I had to be able to deal with the second shot and then play Death Shadow, and then I could have Battle Raged over the next turn. But the thing got me. But we're going to send you guys... That's going to be it for me tonight. We are going to send you guys over to Cat. Here. Where is she? She's right here. So we're going to go send you guys right over to her. And we will see all of you guys. Um, oh, we're going to raid you guys over there. Everyone go over. We'll see all of you guys the next time I hop on. See you next time.